All right. So we're going to go through the MCQ part for your SA1 AFI booklet 2021. All right. So the first question, the diagram shows the life cycle of a plant. Okay. Now, so when dealing with life cycle, always remember that it is a cycle. So it can start from any point. But the important thing is they are always sequential, meaning that one stage must always follow another stage. For example, if you have like a seed, what follows the seed, okay, needs to be a young plant. It cannot be straight away it jumps to become an adult. Alright? So which of the following is correct? Now, what you have here are actually the different types of processes. All right. Now, if you take a look at it, what you should take a look at what are your options available and try and make sense of them. Okay. So we have fertilization, dispersion and germination, germination, pollination and fertilization. Now, we have to recognize that in order for fertilization to happen, okay, X is over here. Okay, it needs to happen when you have an adult flower, only after becoming an adult flower. So X definitely cannot be a cannot be fertilization. Now, how do you know when fertilization can occur? That is when you have your flowers. Okay, and fertilization actually occurs before having fruits. Okay, before your seeds. Alright, so with that, we know that option run fertilization is wrong. And then we can go ahead and cross it out. And then we move down, okay, to the next one. I will do column by column. That's how you do elimination method. Okay, number two, dispersal and germination. So remember... Okay, for it to actually uh, undergo dispersion, it should come before. Okay, sort of before it becomes a young plant, right? Okay, germination. So, therefore, this also cannot be the case, right? Because it needs to be able to disperse before it can germinate to become a young plant. So therefore, we can X up 2 as well. 3. Can X be germination? Yes, it can be. Why? Because through the process of germination, your seed will become a young plant. So germination is where the um, first true leaves come out of the seed together with the roots okay, to become a young plant. So this is possible. Okay. 4. Pollination and fertilization. Once again, this is wrong because you cannot have fertilization and pollination without your flowers. So, at X, it is before your young plant, which is not the uh, it has not reached adult stage yet. So, therefore, it is not possible. So, given such, it seems that there is only one plausible uh, uh, option, which is three. However, we should always check to make sure that okay, um, there is no. Uh, discrepancy. So if you look at this dispersal, which is actually option Y, okay, it actually makes sense because after your adult plants, okay, you will get your fruits, all right, from your fruits, okay, it can then be dispersed, uh, the animals or, you know, other creatures will help to disperse the seeds, okay? So this could be seed dispersal. So option three. Question number two, study the diagrams below, which of the following is correct. So once again, always try to identify the topic and the concept that's being tested. So in this case, it's very straightforward. We are looking at your um, life cycle for plant once again. So like I told you, it needs to be sequential. Okay. Now, the first thing we need to do is to look for the correct sequence. So if you take a look at it, Okay, 
straight off the top, you will notice that, okay, um, number four is correct. Okay, so just go along with it to make sure that it's correct. Huh? So, from your seed, it goes to your seedlings and then to your adult plant and then to your fertilization. Oh, sorry, from your seed to your seedling and then after it to adult plant and then back to seed again. So, this is correct. Two is wrong because it comes from your seed straight away to your adult plant. So we can cross this out. Okay? Check for the rest. Okay, one from seed it goes to seedling and then from seedling to adult plant and then to seed. This is correct. Seed to seedling to adult plant and then after that back to seed. This is also correct. Okay? So there are three plausible answers here. The next thing is to look at the process of fertilization. So for number one, Fertilization happens straight after your seedling. This is not correct because once again, you do not have any flowers when you are seedling. So fertilization cannot occur. Cross this out. Number three, seed to seedling. Fertilization cannot occur once again because your flowers are missing. Okay? So cross this out. Okay? So leaving you with only option four, check one more time that your Fertilization only happens at um, after the adult stage because that's where you have flower. Okay, so I'm just going to pen down a very important point so that um, all of you can copy this down. So fertilization, pollination can only occur. after the adult stage okay and before the seed stage okay all right so this is something that you need to recognize so obviously, if they're asking for other processes such as germination, so germination happens between the seed and the seedling, all right, or the young plant. Moving on to the next question. Okay. Lisa set up an experiment as shown below. She wrapped four similar leaves in different types of plastic bags. The plastic bags were of the same size. She left the plant under bright light for four hours. So this is where your annotation really comes in. Okay. And it will really help you to understand. Okay. And guess or make a very smart um, uh, hypothesis about what this question could be about. So first thing, highlight all the keywords. Okay, so she read leaves in different types of bags. So right off the top, when I see words like leaves, I already know that it's probably got to do with photosynthesis. It's not always the case, but it gives me a hint. So I'm thinking in that particular direction okay and then how do I know bright light so straight away all these things would hint to me that this is actually most probably a question on photosynthesis and every time I tell students okay when you start a paper, one of the most important thing is to write down two very important equations, word equations. The first equation is your photosynthesis equation, which I'm going to pen it down, okay? It will help you answer many questions later on. So in order for photosynthesis to happen, the raw materials would be carbon dioxide together with water. OK, 
okay in the presence of light and chlorophyll I'm just gonna pause you to talk a little bit about light and chlorophyll just in case you know um, you forgot so it doesn't have to be sunlight it can be artificial light as well that's why it's just light and not sunlight chlorophyll is actually found in chloroplasts uh, in your plant cells okay then what are the products you will get oxygen together with your glucose which is actually your simple sugar okay so your oxygen is actually like sort of like a waste product that is given out um, through the stomata and then your glucose is what you really want okay which is the food now so with this equation written down on your paper you will be able to actually answer many many questions okay now so once you have an idea of what the question is going to be about we can now move jump in to answer the question with a clearer mind so then the question asks you which plastic bag contains the highest amount of carbon dioxide so highlight keywords like this after four hours so you know that carbon dioxide okay is produced what is produced during respiration Okay, it's produced during respiration. So that's why I say that the two, uh, the two word equation is so important. Okay, so I'm going to write down um, the word equation for respiration just at the bottom here so that we have something to reference and it's easier for me to help you see the relevance. So in respiration, right, it's always glucose or your digested food together with oxygen it would give you your energy together with carbon dioxide and water okay so it has three products Note that in respiration, your carbon dioxide and water, they are like waste products. They are not needed. Okay? Primarily, what you want is the energy that you yield. So, if you take a look at these two, you will realize that this photosynthesis equation is the opposite of your respiration. One makes food and the other breaks down food. Please write this equation down in your paper during exams, right from the start. Okay, this will help you remove a lot of unnecessary mental burden later on. Just in case you get a bit nervous, then you forget. Okay, uh, this word equation. So you write it down from the start. Any questions you've got to do with respiration and uh, photosynthesis, always refer it back to it. You will be able to find the answer. Okay, so back to our question over here so it's produced during respiration right as i've told you okay and it's taken up it's taken up um during photosynthesis so with that in mind you can then have a clearer un understanding so the one that actually has the highest amount of carbon dioxide would be the leaf that is not able to carry out photosynthesis at all because photosynthesis takes in carbon dioxide right it uses up so if you want something with the highest amount of carbon dioxide you will then have to find a leaf that is not able to carry out photosynthesis so then you look okay this one has clear plastic bags with stripes this one clear plastic bag this one clear plastic bag with tiny holes and this one has a black plastic bag 
So the black plastic bag will have hinted you that the plant is not able to receive sunlight. So because of that, there will be no photosynthesis. And because of that, there can only be respiration that is happening. Now I want to stress once again that respiration happens 24-7, okay, 365 days a year for the plant. A lot of students still have this misconception that, oh, when you carry out photosynthesis, you don't respire. No, that's not true. Okay, the reason why you give out oxygen doing photosynthesis is because the amount of oxygen that you produce over here is more than enough okay for the respiration so after the plant has already used up whatever it has produced oxygen it produces for respiration the excess goes up okay so this is very important so for this leaf right what happens is that only respiration is happening no photosynthesis and that's why there is an accumulation of your carbon dioxide okay this is a very common question so it's very important okay so answer d moving on question four okay in an experiment, a plant has been kept in the dark for 24 hours at first. It was then exposed to bright sunlight with two outer rings, X, uh, stem, X and Y being removed, here and here. Okay, The water carrying tubes in X, ring X and ring Y were removed. Okay, After some time, three leaves of ABC were removed from the plant and were tested for starch using iodine solution. Which of the following sets of observations is correct for leaves A, B, C when they were tested for starch? Now, first things first, okay? Certain things I need to highlight to you why they are being done. That is a common convention. Now, this kept in the dark for 24 hours first uh, is quite a standard procedure wherever you want to carry out experiments using starch test later. This is a process known as starch, uh, de-starching. Now, the whole idea of de-starching is to let or allow the plant to use up most of the glucose most slash all the uh, sorry all the starch in the plant why is this necessary for fair tests so think about it if you didn't use up all the starch at first before you use the plant for experiment later on when you do the starch test okay people could argue and say that no the starch test came back positive because it was uh, due it was due, not due to the experiment but due to a time before the experiment okay you didn't remove all the starch but how do i know that the starch that is tested present is it from the experiment or it was already there before the experiment? Mm -hmm. So this is why this de-starching process is very important. So it could come up for exams and ask you which one, you know, should he use? You know, so you have a plant that is not de and a plant that is de -starched. Okay, so remember this is important, huh? Okay? So it was then exposed to bright sunlight for two out, uh, with the two outer rings removed okay so then there is a interesting component here it tells you that the substance that absorbs carbon dioxide is being placed inside in B so obviously you know that B okay 
has no photosynthesis, right? Okay, now what about the rest of the leaves? Okay, A, B, and C. So they told you already, water carrying tubes in both ring X and Y were actually being removed. So as such, uh, water cannot go beyond Y. And we know that based on our word equation, that's why the word equation is very important, one of the key ingredients for photosynthesis is actually your water. So because water can no longer flow past Y, it cannot also flow past X, your B and A should not have any photosynthesis. Okay? C has no issue. There is sunlight and water can reach C. So therefore, C would be positive for photosynthesis. Okay? So what should be the correct answer? Now, just in case you didn't know, when if you're going to write um, answers for this type of question, right? Whenever you deal with the question, right? Be very careful. It's not iodine. Eh? Okay? In fact, this is not correct. It's actually iodine solution. Okay? Because the, the, uh, this substance that you use, the agent that you use to test is actually iodine dissolved in water. Okay? And you should always understand that you must tell me what is the original color. So you need to say that in the presence of starch, yellowish brown iodine solution turns blue black. And if it's negative, right, you have to say iodine solution remains Okay, remains yellowish brown. Now we will accept um, yellow brown anywhere along that range because different production companies or different batches of iodine solution being produced could have a slight variation in color that is acceptable. Okay, so once you have annotated everything and have already deduced, you would know that A should remain. Um, brown or yellow similarly with B the only one that should turn blue black should be C okay so therefore your answer for this would be answer 2 okay right moving on to the next question Question 5. Substance P, Q, R are either liquid or gases. Cake fill two identical springes X and Y with equal volumes of P, Q, R as shown below. The nozzles, which is over here, of X and Y are sealed. So right off the top, I'm already thinking liquid or gases. So this will have hinted me that ah, this is actually a question of matter, different states of matter. Okay. She pushed each plunger with the same amount of force. It is observed that the plunger in W moved down slightly, but not the plunger in X. Which of the following substances about P, Q, R uh, is correct? Okay. So you have to run through and then you have to take uh, you, Sorry, you have to run through and then justify whether each of this is correct or not Okay, so the first one P has a smaller volume than R Okay So in this case Alright They told you it's equal volume So because of that, you know that this is not true So you can go away, go ahead and cross this out 
Okay, next. PQR have the same mass. Unfortunately, you will not be able to know this for a simple reason. Did they have a beam balance and did they use it for each of the substance? They didn't say that. Information was not included inside, so therefore you are unable to tell. So once again, 2 is also wrong. R can be compressed but not P and Q. Probably because, okay, that is a plausible answer. Because as you can see, since X, when you push it downwards, did not move at all, it tells you that the both substance here cannot be compressed. Okay, it has a fixed volume. As opposed to Y, when you push it downwards, okay, since you know that Q is already has a fixed volume because of this experiment over here, you will then be able to deduce that R does not have a fixed volume and can be compressed. So yes, okay, number three is a plausible answer, but remember when you eliminate answers, you need to justify every one. This is how you make sure that you don't uh, be careless, okay? Because in MCQ, right, it's always about picking the best possible answer, all right? Only Q takes the shape of this container, which is wrong, right? Okay, all of them actually somehow managed to fit into the container. So, therefore, answer 3. 6. Okay, Ellen is pumping more air in the fully inflated balloon as shown. Which of the following, okay, correctly shows the change in mass and volume of air in the basketball? So they tell you it is already fully inflated already, but you're still pumping more air. So because the fully inflated tells you that, okay, it has already reached the max volume, okay? It cannot increase in size anymore. It's, it's maximum already. So therefore, my volume should stay the same. It should not change. So right off the top, anything that has increased in volume or decreased in volume, okay, all out already. Actually, this question is pretty simple. And then you check, your mass should increase. Why? Because air actually is a metal, it, it has mass. It's just that it can be compressed. So while your ball doesn't increase in size anymore, Okay, more air is actually going in and each particle of air actually has a mass. So you have to account. So the more particles of air you put inside, then of obviously the mass should increase without increasing the volume because air can be compressed. That is the key idea that they're testing you on. Okay, but air has mass. So answer two. Okay, number seven is a heating curve, something that um, most of you may not be very familiar or have forgotten. So I will take a little bit more time to talk about the heating curve. All right, Melissa heated a substance for 30 minutes and measured its temperature during the 30 minutes at one minute interval. So what does this mean? This means that every single minute she takes the temperature. She heats it up for 30 minutes. So that means, imagine you put a beaker of water, you put it on a fire or a heat source. Okay. Every one minute, you will take the temperature. You'll record it down for 30 minutes. She placed, she, sorry, she plotted her graph in the, sorry, she plotted her results in a graph below as shown. Okay. Now, based on the graph above, which of the following statements, okay, are true. Now, take a look over here and here. You will realize that even though there is uh, heat being given, okay, definitely what? She started heating at minute zero. Do you realize that the temperature does not increase at all? There is no increase in temp uh, temperature. In fact, it is constant throughout and then suddenly it starts to increase. All right. Now take note. Uh, this is very important. Okay. During the time period, I'm gonna highlight this. 
and highlight this. Okay, write it at, and then I'm gonna write it at the side. Okay, during change of state, there is no temperature remain constant. So temperature remains constant. Doing changing of states. So what do I mean by this? So for example, you have ice. You heat the ice up. So ice is actually solid to begin with. So your ice that is solid to begin with, right? When you heat it up, okay, it will remain the solid. And start gaining heat. Okay? And then it will change state, right? It will melt. To become liquid. However, the temperature will always remain at zero degrees until all your solid ice become liquid water. So it will just remain constant. So over here we know that it is not ice that we're talking about because it didn't start at zero degrees. So she just said she just said it heated a substance. She didn't say what substance is that. But I just want to point out an example using ice. Okay? As an example and this is very important now the first one it states here okay the substance is at the same state at points W and X this is not correct because it has undergone a change of state remember so during change of state it remains constant after everything maybe it's melting okay it's probably melting so maybe it's a solid state here and once everything, all the solid has been melted to become a liquid, temperature will start to increase again. So this is definitely wrong. Okay, because uh, at point W is probably a solid, at point X is probably a liquid. Okay, B, the substance is at the same state at points X and Y. Yes, this is correct. Because at points X and Y, the temperature did not remain constant. There's no straight line. So we know that it's steadily increasing in temperature. So that means these two points, okay, are still the same state. So yes, this is correct. C. The substance loses heat to the surrounding at point W. Okay. No, it did not. It didn't lose heat. What? If it lost heat, okay, then you should see a drop in temperature. That wasn't the case. It was gaining heat, okay? However, the heat gain was used to melt the substance. So this is also false. Last one, the substance continues to gain heat from the heat source at Z. Okay? This is true. However, it's just that there is another change of state. So in this case, if this portion over here is liquid, then this must be gaseous. So at this point, it has probably reached boiling point. So if I'm going to be presumptuous and note down everything right that I know, right? This will be a solid state from here to here. And then from here to here, I will say that it is a liquid state. And then from here to here, this would be a gaseous state. Okay, actually it's more of gaseous plus liquid. Because it is still uh, evaporating or still boiling off, sorry. And then over at W, it will still be li uh, solid plus liquid state. Because it is in the process of melting. Only at this point where everything has melted, then temperature will start to increase again. So I would say that at somewhere at around this point here, at this temperature, this is actually the boiling point. And this over here is the melting point. Okay, make sense? But this is not water for sure because 
the melting point did not start at zero degrees. Okay? So looking at it, in this case, your answer would be 3. B and D only. Okay? Next, question number 8. Okay? A ball tied to a string swings from A to B and then to C as shown in the diagram below. Which of the graph correctly shows the change in potential energy and kinetic energy? Okay? So, the potential energy in this case, we are probably talking about your... GPE okay and you know GPE has got to do with height okay so you need to understand that in this case as the ball swings okay when it starts at point A it should be the highest amount of GPE because that's where you start and then as it goes towards B remember this energy cannot be created or destroyed so from here to here, you would know that there should be a decrease in your GPE to KE. Sorry, GPE but an increase in KE. Because the conversion in this case would be GPE to KE. Right? And then after that, from here, your KE would then be converted to GPE. So when you think when you take a look at it right the highest amount of gp is here then it goes down okay but your ke will increase as it goes down because most of the gpe will be converted to ke and then at, from this point to this point your ke should actually start to decrease because your gpe is increasing because we must always remember that it's a conversion okay so your answer would actually be three Okay. Next. Question number nine. Okay. The diagram below shows a team park, right? The letters A, B, C, D, E, F shows different points along the track okay now car starts from a and travels to f from here all the way down okay where it stops by hitting a bumper at e okay so sorry bumper is over here at e the car enters a trench filled with water which of the following statements are correct about the car okay so let's take a look at points a and F, the car has no kinetic energy. Okay? A is over here and F is over here. Okay? This is actually correct, right? Because at point here is stationary, it's not moving. And then at F, it would have already stopped moving also. So yes, this is correct. There's no kinetic energy. Next, Q. The car moves along the track from B to C only because sorry because of gravity from B to C yes that's correct because gravity pull is pulling it down correct in downwards direction so this is also correct R the car has maximum gravitational potential energy at D this is not correct right because there is even at B is at a higher point at A is also at a higher point Okay, and if there are points whereby the car is at a higher position, therefore it has more GPE than D. So this is not correct. S. The car slows down when it moves through with water at E due to water resistance. This is true. Okay. So therefore your answer should be P, Q and S. Alright, 